wave if you can hear me. I'm a bit unsure. Yep, all good? Great. Um, I'm Simon Clark. I'm a member of the St Margaret's congregation. I think most of you know that. Chris is still not with us, but those of you who follow him on Facebook will know he's having a wonderful time on the North Coast making the acquaintance of his new grandchild, Elijah. John Goss will be bringing us our reflection this morning, picking up on the anniversary of the Uniting Church. 43 years old, Mark and tell me that they were in the Sydney Town Hall on the 22nd of June in 1977. I'm not sure whether anyone else was here, but was, was there for that momentous occasion. So Margaret will be helping with some of our readings along with Margaret Hunt. It's a bit of synergy, isn't there, of having two Margarets from St Margaret's. Um, hopefully it will work well. Um, many thanks to both of them and thanks to Brian Rope for being our Zoom Meister this morning. Our liturgy sheet has been distributed and I trust you've got that. Our responsive readings will be on your screen. I do apologise that the hymn words are not there. However, the two hymns that will be part of the service are both very well known ones. And I suspect that you won't have any problems following on. So let's begin. Our responsive readings will be our usual formula of the reader in white and the congregation in, in yellow. O separate in body, we are together in spirit. O separate in body, the same God joins us together. Join with me in our call to worship. We are here to give thanks for the faithfulness of our ancestors in faith. For God has given us gifts of faithfulness. We come, God of the journey, a people from different places, different histories, different cultures. We come hoping to find companionship for the journey, solidarity for the struggle. struggle. We gather, God of hospitality, around your welcome table, a table not yet round, but rounding. We gather, seeking to become a round table people. Welcoming of all. With no first seating, no first and no last. And no call is for the least of these. We yearn, God of diversity, for a new way of living and relating. As neighbours, not strangers. As brothers and sisters not them and us. We yearn to live, yearn to live fully celebrating, celebrating both the diversity of our human family and, family and the unity of our, our called peace, peace love, love, love and, justice. and justice. We are here to ask your blessing on the future. We need confidence for a new day. God, God has given us the gift of hope. Of hope. I hope, hope that will carry, carry us, us into, into a new day. Into a new day. Thanks, Thanks to be God. God. Let us pray. Creator God, we believe that you have created all the nations of the world to live together in peace, to share their riches, enjoy the, their diverse languages, cultures and colours, and to care for each other's need. Grant us the wisdom and the courage to break down all the walls that we ourselves built to separate one from another. Walls within families. Walls between cultures and religions. Walls between those of, a, of differing abilities and resources. Empower us, God, to rid ourselves of selfishness indifference, prejudice, and hate. Fill us with your glorious vision that springs from our common beginnings as human beings, 
created in your image and point to our common goal in your renewed creation. peninsula which we call Gorinda in our native language. Our people have been there for thousands of years dating back to uh, almost 60,000 years. Our sense of relationship to our country is that we need to care for it in order for it to provide for us. Mana Bangara is uh, the word which is used Mana plenty and prosperous and Bangara is country so prosperous country, healthy country so it's pretty much fitting for what we're trying to do with this project and using our language means you know just more than a name it means that there is a sense of support from the wider community to acknowledge that that we are the traditional owners and that we've been you know we've been here looking after the country as it should have been for thousands of years Margaret Hunt to bring us our Ezekiel reading and then Margaret Erickson to bring us our, our reading from the Gospel. And I'd just like to mention that we've also got Margaret Forster here today, another Margaret. She's with us here at home. Okay. Um, the reading is from Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 15 to 28. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, take a stick <coughs> and write on it for Judah and the Israelites associated with it. Then take another stick and write on it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and all the house of Israel associated with it and join them together into one stick so that they may become one in your hand. And when your people say to you, will you not show us what you mean by these? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I'm about to take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel associated with it, and I will put the stick of Judah upon it and make them one stick in order that they may be one in my hand. When the sticks on which you write are in your hand before their eyes, then say to them, thus says the Lord God, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from every quarter and bring them to their own land. I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and one king shall be king over them all. Never again shall they be two nations and never again shall they be divided into two kingdoms. They shall never again defile themselves with their idols and their detestable things or with any of their transgressions. I will save them from all the apostasies in which they have fallen and will cleanse them. Then they shall be my people and I will be their God. My servant David shall be king over them and they shall all have one shepherd. They shall follow my ordinances and be careful to observe my statutes. 
They shall live in the land that I gave to my servant Jacob, in which your ancestors lived. They and their children and their children's children shall live there forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will bless them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary among them forevermore. My dwelling place shall be with them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Then the nations shall know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary is among them forevermore. Science of lesson. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 17. I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just before we ask John Goss to bring us a reflection, I'd like us to listen to a song called Make Us One by an American artist called Twila Harris. And it picks up on the themes of the John reading especially, but also the Ezekiel reading as well. So let's listen to that song and then we'll go straight on to John for our reflection. I... I, I don't know if anyone can see me, um, but um, I'm John Goss, and welcome to the reflection. Oops, have we just... Hello, can people see me? Can people yes. hear me? Yes. Right, okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, the internet connection has decided to become unstable, but hopefully we'll get through it. Um, hello, can you hear me? Um, yes, we can hear you, John. I think yes, the, yeah, yeah. the internet connection is unstable. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see, if, see if it works. Um, fo camera in my computer is uh, not working, so Joel is hosting me, so thanks to Joel. John, you're too high up, though. We can only see the sort of bottom half of your face. The church and and uh, use my laptop down there without video, but 
Um, oh. um, but if you can carry on with the rest of the service, Simon, and we I'll hear you, John. In later. Will that work? We can hear you clearly now, John. Okay, well, it, it, it just keeps dropping out. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll see how we go. Why can't we see John? No, no we can. That's better. All right. So in the reading from the Gospel of John, uh, Jesus prays to God that his disciples may become completely one so that the world may know two things. One, that Jesus has been sent from God. And two, that God loves Jesus, uh, us, Jesus' disciples, as much as God loves his son, Jesus. It's in the unity we have with each other the sharing of loving community with each other that we show to others that we are children of God. It is not through eloquent arguments that we demonstrate the existence of God. God is love and the loving nature of God is demonstrated when we share the love that we have received from God with other people. And every act of love, however imperfect, builds up community, which is God's purpose in creating the world. The communities that God builds up have many different dimensions. The first community God is building is the community within ourselves. unity of body, mind, heart, and soul. We achieve greater unity within ourselves for, by example, caring for our physical body as much as we can, and by favoring our healthy emotions rather than our less healthy emotions. Music is one way that many people find is helpful to soothe the savage breast within. It will certainly be good when we can get back to singing in public again. Um, by the way, the the latest rules that were posted by the ACT government on Friday not only allow choirs to practice, but they also allow choirs to give concerts. Distancing rules of one person per four square metres and 1.5 metre separation from fellow choir members than the audience are followed. So we're not that far away from being able to sing together safely in church. Another unity we all want is unity for uniformity. Instead, we should aim for a unity which maintains our diversity of gender, of sense of humour, of belief and of behaviour. Of course, we don't want unloving behaviour as that drives the family apart. But we don't want uniformity of behaviour. In fact, the surest way to muck up a relationship in a family is to strenuously try and change the other person to make them more like us. It's one of the reasons I'm opposed to the traditional concept of evangelism, whereby us Christians try and convert our non-Christian friends to Christianity. Not only will that sort of conversion attempt almost always fail, it will also usually ruin the friendship. Trying to change the other person to be more like us is not a loving act. Next up from unity within families is unity within a church community. The idea of the body of Christ is many diverse parts of the body working together to achieve good things. And diversity is the key. If we were all thumbs or all feet 
or all ears, it would be a mess. Then we have unity of congregations. Oops. Did you turn his video? Um, no. Um, it says that my video has been stopped because the host stopped it. Um, but that's okay. Um, um, so th then we have unity of congregations within a wider church, like the Uniting Church of Australia, whose birthday we are celebrating. There is certainly great diversity within the Uniting Church. Diversity between rural and city congregations, diversities in size of congregations, diversity in ethnicity, and diversity in theology. The diversity in theology is um, the diversity in theology is um, has caused tensions in the Uniting Church in recent times, particularly with regard to um, same gender marriage. But um, compromises have been reached, um, and 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 we move forward. But the tension does illustrate that diversity is not all sweetness and light. You actually have to work hard to maintain a diversity which is life-giving. The reading from Ezekiel is a reading we don't often hear. It comes after the reading of the resurrection in, in the Valley of the Dry Bones. And it prophesizes of the unity of the northern kingdom of Israel, represented by the tribe of Joseph, with the southern kingdom of Israel, represented by the tribe of Judah. This story is a sort of a parable of the uniting church in which three separate churches come together. Um, and the story of the uniting church, of course, is the story of organizational unity. But you can have ecumenical cooperation without organizational unit. And St. Margaret's relationship with Holy Cross illustrates this. At St. Margaret's, we have a, a lot of ecumenical cooperation with Holy Cross. We still share the buildings with Holy Cross. In contrast to the situation you uh, were forced to at St. James, where you were fully separated from the church, Church of the Good Shepherd. There are definite advantages in our relationship with Holy Cross in that enables us to do things together that um, we could not do if we were acting separately. But it's not always easy. During these COVID times, we have had to follow the Anglican COVID rules as well as the Uniting Church COVID rules when we're in the on the church side of the site. And similarly, the Anglicans have to follow our rules when they're on using the halls as well as their own rules. It's not simple. Ecumenical cooperation does come at a cost. And maybe the full separation you have at St. James is the better way to go sometimes. Um, with ecumenical cooperation, I don't think there's any one rule that says the, what the best way to do it is. We each have to decide in our own community, listening to God, what works best for us. There are a number of other unities that God is calling us to. Unity among the different faiths, for example where dialogue between the different faiths enriches us all. And I think that dialogue should encompass secular spiritual and philosophical understandings, as I think we have much to learn from our secular colleagues. Then there is unity and cooperation between the nations of this earth, something that at this point we sorely need a lot more of. And unity with creation, is a core requirement if life is to continue to flourish on this earth. And finally, I would like to talk about 
unity of communities of different races, different genders, and people with diverse abilities and ages. Unity in these areas is very, very difficult. And yet we need to make pro progress because racism and sexism and ageism and other discriminations are extremely damaging. The Black Lives Matter protests have brought the problems due to racism into focus. I am sad to say, I rather despair about the prospects for positive changes in this area, at least in the short term. And the main reason for my despair is that when I look inside myself, I see racist and sexist feelings that appear to me to be deeply entrenched in my unconscious. In my conscious mind, of course, I strive not to be be racist or sexist. But in my unconscious mind, there is a lot of really negative stuff. And when I ask myself where these racist and sexist feelings come from, um, I, I think it's probably from my childhood, from the books I read back then, and from the racist and sexist attitudes of those around me including family. The Biggles books, for example, um, which I, I loved as a child, have a lot of racism and sexism in them. And in fact, reflecting back, almost all the heroes in the books I have read, whether fiction or non-fiction, the heroes were almost always white males. And the bad people in the books, or the victims who were rescued by the white males, were mostly people of colour and or women. The hope I have with regard to sexism and racism is that our children and grandchildren were or are being raised with different stories but I'm not very hopeful with regard to our generations. I think it's very hard to change our unconscious racist and sexist attitudes. And maybe the only way to a world which is less racist and sexist is for us to die out. <laughs> it's often said, in universities that new ideas are not fully accepted until the professors with the old ideas die. I will finish on that uh, rather um, negative note, um, but it's an obvious point for discussion. Is there a way perhaps um, to cleanse our unconscious of the racist and sexist attitudes that have been baked in by childhood conditioning? Or do we have to place our hope in the younger generations who will replace us? Um, perhaps someone has a story as to how their racist and sexist attitudes have changed over time, which will give us some hope. And, and also, you know, if, if you have a story, maybe you could reflect on what caused that change. Can you restart your video now, John? Um, yeah, okay. Um, it, it's having problems. How come you could need it? You could do that, but you could. Okay. Uh, okay. 
All right. I'm back. I'm back. But um, uh, we could. Um, so I'm back. All right. Um, and uh, no, perhaps. Um, so so. Um, perhaps we can open it up for discussion now. Okay. Well, I have a story about um, uh, the racism part of it, uh, John. Um, uh, my um, previous uh, in-laws had a flat to rent and they advertised it and um, we saw them shortly afterwards and asked um, had they had success and they said well yes and no they had this couple who wanted to rent it but they weren't, weren't sure what the neighbours would think and we said why what's the problem and they said well they're coloured and we said that's not a problem rent it to them and they took our advice and they did and they became the best of friends with these people they were actually Fijians and they were wonderful musicians and singers and they frequently held parties in the house um, belonging to my in-laws and as I say became firm friends and they later went to Fiji to visit them when they'd returned home Um, Anne and Dennis, were you looking to say something? I was just thinking about our granddaughter, um, Naomi. Her best friend is um, part South African, I think, but she's got quite dark skin. But her daughter um, is be best friends with Naomi's daughter, so that it's carrying on. And I think that's good. They're getting, they know one another and so well and there's no difference it's just an equal playing field mm, great peers i think did you have your hand up you'll need to unmute your microphone peers you're right now peers good I uh, I feel that my career, because of the career which I've had, which was in medicine, I, I have mixed with a lot of people from other races. First of all, in, in the United Kingdom, one of my fellow students was an African. I had Indians as working as residents in the hospitals that I worked in. And the same thing has happened when I have gone and worked overseas as I did fairly towards the end of my life. I now, in fact, go to shops where I can talk to the people behind the counter and meet them on a regular basis. And you can't do that in Woolworths or Coles very much. But most of them are from overseas. And, and it's good to be able to talk to them and relate to them. And I think that sort of thing is going to help to break down these divisions between people from different countries. Thanks for that Piers. One more thing, I did in fact, I wrote three things down uh, that I thought we ought to be talking about today. We've done, looked at two of them, the refugee, refugees and, and an anniversary but we haven't celebrated the end of slavery in, in the USA a hundred years ago. And mm. that's important too, that we, we still have slavery in the world and we need to break it down, but we're not breaking it down very efficiently at the moment. Yeah. And it's reoccurring in this country even today. Yeah. Thank you, Piers, for reminding us of that. Pam Kelly, I think you were waving. Oh, well, one of the stories I can say is when we taught ten years ago in Kiduga, where it was nearly all Aboriginal, we had Aboriginal aid from the time of school. I ran a big barbecue in the backyard one time. We invited, there were the squatters, you know, around uh, the 
bunch of people and people in the town and I did invite more Aboriginal apes but they withdrew and then at the end of the night they didn't I suppose they were nervous um, I don't know uh, because we were good friends with them so we were the kids but one of the ladies who was a very um, sort of glamorous squatter lady and she said to me after oh I like your choice of girls and I went, what? <laughs> because um, this is a long time ago, and in the bowling club, which I was a member of, it was 32 or something, um, they all came down one day and said, come quickly on the committee, you've got to vote. These Aboriginal women want to be on the bowling committee. I said, yeah, I'll come, but I'm voting for them. And they did get in. But it was very hard there because you're talking about mm. 40 years ago, there were very entrenched views and a lot of the Aboriginal people were looking after the neglected Aboriginal kids, just like that we do with white children. And so, but that was a bit of an eye opener to me because we run a, we had a, a musical there that I was in, Oklahoma, and um, this lady would actually directed it and she had Aboriginal people in it acting. But it was still there. Yeah. Mm. Any further comments? Yeah, Robert Bennett. No, you need to unmute yourself, I think, Robin. We had a, an Aboriginal uh, community at Rye Park and they were employ, em, employed on the farms. Um, one young lady who was only 17 was employed by my mother to look after me as while, I, um, while she had her um, second baby by sister. And um, I can remember, strangely enough, I can remember her and I was only about two. Um, and she was on a par. I didn't realise she was only 17 at the time. I thought she would have been in her 20s, which she was sort of older. But the white people from Rye Park, if you like, um, treated them as equals. And we, when this woman became 90, we were all invited to her party um, by her family who still live in the area and back to the Aboriginal Reserve where her original home was, which is just a few miles away from our home. Um, so I always felt that they were always treated as equals and they were given employment and they're always fair and they always uh, gave us something in return. So I'd never had, even though we were in the district, I never had that feeling that they, it was them and us, mm. um, which was really lovely. That's great. Thanks for that, Robin. And thank you, everyone, for those insights. And thank you, John, for the, for the challenges that you've placed before us um, to recognise not only institutionalised issues, but the issues that are within ourselves and are very difficult to manage. I'd like to ask you to join me in a declaration of renewal which will be on your screen. Come Holy Spirit, please join me. Renew our renew hearts. hearts. Renew our faith. Renew, renew our love for you. you. Renew, renew our, our openness and, and compassion. compassion. Renew our sense of justice. Renew your church. Renew our love for the gospel. Renew the liveliness of our worship. Renew our commitment to the care of the poor. Renew the understanding of the calling. Come, Holy Spirit. Renew the earth. Teach us to protect our environment. Teach us to protect our people as our own. 
Let's have a brief time of sharing before we move into our prayers for others. Are there things that people want to place before the whole community? Actually, like seeing everyone. John, how is how is Linda's mum? Oh, thanks, Simon. Um, she's a, a, It's hard to tell. I've. Just, I've received a message. Um, Linda's with her mum today. Um, it was a better night last night, so um, uh, so, so we're hope, hopeful that uh, she'll be in more comfort in the coming days. Right. Thank you. Anyone else? Anne, were you? No, I think you're muted, Anne. No, it, thanks, Simon. It was about Yvonne that I was going to ask John. Right. Okay. Piers? Problems that are occurring in Western Australia at the moment between the Aboriginal population and the mining companies. We mm. had one lot of very important sites blown up, and there's a chance that BHP may do the same thing with some other sites mm. is a breakdown in a relationship which oughtn't to be occurring. So that's my concern. Thank you. Robin. Uh, I'd like us to pray for Shirley and Alf who are going through a difficult time as you probably all know and Kathy Thomas and her, Kathy Thomas's family, whom a lot of you all know, a funeral will probably be sometime in the coming days. Thank you, Robin. Any others? I'm afraid I can't see everyone, so, Pam? <coughs> My friend that I brought along, um, she's going through hard times. They're going to have a wait, uh, a private, Funeral, I think private cremation and then they want a happy time. She told me this so I saw her a week before she died and she said I just want people to be happy and um, tell stories and whatever so um, if anyone's interested when I find out from Belinda they've got to be able to, to order to uh, hire a room but she also said although she's not a church girl or whatever but she loves our group and she really, really appreciated all the care and the prayers and cards. Simon, did we mention Alan Asquith and family? Um, no, we haven't, Margaret. Would you like to do that? That'd be great. Just to mention that we hold them in our prayers too. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And also uh, Robin's friend, Lynn. They had the funeral for her on Friday. Right. Um, we should pray for them, for that family yeah. as well, the Ferguson family. Right. Thank you. Okay, let's let's hold those things in our in our hearts and our minds as we join together in our prayers for others. As we share the life of your church today, we pray that our witness will be true to Christ. Give us a voice for the silenced. And quiet communion will only silence for the the path. Give us tears in the face of grief. And laughter. Give us sharpness in the revealing of injustice and your eternal gentleness. Your eternal gentleness with those Give us integrity 
in admitting our own confusions. And if Will you call us to work with you in confident relationships, believing that our prayers are joining with our love, with your love for the world? In the grace of God lies the infinite possibility of hope. Amen. Amen. And we join together in one of my favourite songs, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. Sentiments with them into their life. Please join with me for our words of mission and then I'll conclude with a blessing. Then there'll be a short break while people go off to get their, their drink, drink of choice. And Brian, are we staying in one room or splitting? Um, I'll try to split us, I think. Okay, so we'll do that. But I think that will be done. I think that just happens for you. But you've done it before, so you know how it works. Our, our words of mission. Call us on the, on the adventure of your passionate life, O oh God. Carry us past the boundaries and near horizons of our small dream. Paint our world in vivid colours so that we see a whole new vision of your possibilities. Hold the, the cup of living water to our lips and breathe into our souls the life of the May we be those who dare to take into our hands your cross of courage, justice, hope and love and plant it as the tree of life abroad in all the earth. We ask this in the name of the one who walks in this way for us to the end of time. Amen. And our blessing, friends, may the blessing found in the strength of the Brindabellas, the blessing found in the calm of Lake Burley Griffin on a frosty morning, the blessing found in the freshness of gum tree and wild flower remain with us today and through our week. And may God's strength, God's peace, and God's creativity go with us always. Amen. Amen.